Another week of vaccine failure and lockdown fatigue? Not on this show. Not when there's a ship stuck in a canal. This week, the mega canners veer off course thanks to the sudden gust of wind of more interesting and tangible news elsewhere. Conrad gets to talk about his cargo adventures, Megan gets to have a jab, Merkel does a U-turn, and we all get to appreciate Templehof Airport. Thanks for the vodka, first Uranov. Everybody. It's time for another episode of Megan's Megacan. I'm Megan and I'm here with Ex Berliner Magazine and Conrad Werner. Hello, Conrad. Hello. How are you this fine day? Uh, I'm okay. Every day is <laughs> similar to the one before these days. It's very, very true. <laughs> Someone was trying to tell a story and use like a marker of time earlier to me and like couldn't do it. So we just came up with sometime, not now. Um, this thing happened to me. <laughs> On the plus side, we're recording at 6.41 and it's light, which is always nice when the clocks spring forward. Do you want to get into the debate about whether or not we should have uh, this? Ab- absolutely not. No, okay. I don't. No. Um, because I've sort of already had that today and we couldn't really come up with a solution. So <laughs> okay. I don't really have any good opinions on it. Right. Let's move on then. Yeah. So I have a new mega can for us today. What do you mean, a new mega I know, one that I've not seen before. I thought we've had them all about four times each. (laughs) We've had all the good ones four times each. So there's lots that are like off the main brands and this is one of them. Okay. So I find this in the supermarket on like Tuesday and I was having a really bad day. I was having one of those days where the pandemic was just weighing really heavy and you're just like, this is never going to end. This is awful. Just grim. And I was like, Berlin sucks. All the stuff that makes it amazing that I usually really love have crumbled into a pile of nothingness. Bars, clubs, healthcare system that is more efficient than the NHS. None of that shit is coming up trumps for me right now or wasn't on Tuesday, but it still does mega cans. And one thing I've been discussing that I really, really miss or that I really want them to do a mega of is a Smirnoff ice. I don't know if you ever drank Smirnoff ice, the Alco pop as a child. I did a lot as a teenager between the ages of 15. But the can of Smirnoff ice you can usually get here is only like 3.5%. However, I have managed to buy something that I think might be a Smirnoff ice <laughs> mega can. It's not Smirnoff. Oh, right. But it and is you... Furst Uranoff ice. <laughs> it is, is 10%. Furst and I am hoping to fucking Christ that what <laughs> Berlin will have delivered me in my hour of need, seeing it as it is the love of my life, it will have delivered me a Smirnoff Ice mega can. I, if not, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. So let's go. I, I just I just really want to know if Count Uranov is a historical figure. Well, I was thinking that because there's no... I wasn't thinking it, but... Oh, wow. It, well, well, it's got an a little face. Can. He's got a little... There's a little, like... <laughs> They've got some little face on here. Bust of them. It could be the Count himself. I mean, otherwise it's a very sort of plain can. It's a slimline can, one of the taller, slimmer ones, which I don't, not always my favourite. And it's got like a stop sign on it that says from over 18s only. Well, that's that's you and I both, I think, Conrad, (laughs) at this stage. That's fine. Yeah. But not when I was, right, come on. Cheers. Cheers. Come on, Berlin. Okay. Oh, God, it's clear. That's not a good sign. Don't never look inside the mega can. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, my God. I think that's it. Oh, shit. I can't. I'm not realized I can't quite fully remember what a smart enough ice tastes like, but that is pretty fucking close. It tastes like. Oh, um, I knew Berlin wouldn't let me down. (laughs) All is forgiven. No bars, no functioning healthcare system, but. I mean, the healthcare system is functioning, just not in the way that most of the population needs it to function. It tastes a bit like Sprite. It does. I think that's delicious, frankly. I mean, I'm already getting a sort of canker on my tongue from the bitter sweetness. It's almost like a bitter lemon. I can't really taste the alcohol. (laughs) It's one of those. Welcome to the world of Smirnoff Ice Alcohol Pops, my (laughs) friend. That is kind of the point. Okay, I would rather not talk about German news because the only news I'm currently interested in at the moment is the fate of the ship that has blocked that canal. I'm obsessed. (laughs) Okay. Everyone's obsessed. We all need to be obsessed. This is the content we need in coronavirus times. Yeah, the ever given. It's not complex. It's not 
a systemic well I mean we could get into all of this it's not like a systemic problem it's just someone has fucked their parking <laughs> or driving and has really oh really <laughs> messed things up are you been watching the live feed of them trying to free it from the no I've been mm-hmm. getting all of my news exclusively from two comedy twitter accounts one right, okay. which is pretending to be the ship <laughs> and one pretending to be the person in the digger trying to dig it out <laughs> yeah it's an awful situation I mean it must be awful for the captain of that ship or whoever was on in oh, on, on the in on the bridge absolutely dreadful and it, also for stuck. the Suez Canal apparently is losing the figure I saw was 14 million dollars a day that's a lot of money because I have spent a week on a cargo ship Please tell me more. In I, fact, can we just do this? I don't. I'm looking at this list of stuff I want. We're supposed to discuss, well, well, and I just don't want to do it. <laughs> when, when I was young and carefree, I once, um, I, I once got on a cargo ship in Brazil and Did you? Uh, sailed to Spain. Wow. Yeah, as a kind of. Um, I just always wanted to go across you the ocean. You can do on that, ship. and it's a very eco-friendly way to travel. So well done, you. Yeah, although cargo ships themselves are not very eco-friendly. But just hitching a ride on one, it's quite expensive. You have to. It is expensive. I've. Um, but it is a lot easier than you think it is. You just have to find a travel agency that will book one for you because every single cargo ship in the world has got um, passengers. And what was it like being on it for like, a week? What? Well, you're, you, you're very much alone with your thoughts. Well, we're fucking all ready for that. At least you're in Spain by the end of it rather than just your own fucking living room again one yeah. year later. <laughs> I mean, there was no, there's no internet and no phones and only the same few people to talk to. There was one other passenger on, on my ship who was a retired Swiss school teacher who was just traveling around the world on his retirement. The one bad thing would be if the other person, like if you got on there and there were some one or two other passengers who were really awful, that would be difficult. But other than yeah. that... And, and the only... Yeah, you have to have some Thing to occupy yourself yeah but it's like being a little um yeah and then you can you can wander around whenever you like onto the deck they had a little gym they had some uh, pirated dvds that didn't work and that was it like half nice. of them didn't work and then um the main thing i can tell you is that it was this was a big ship it wasn't as big as the ever given but this was a pretty big ship and you'd think that anyone who has to control uh, uh, something like that would be well paid and all these companies are uh, european companies these are all like friend these are big logistics cargo companies mm-hmm. they're like cgn is one and they're, they're all european companies but the crews on them are all from other countries that are not are european. you gonna ruin this story and like tell me it's all of this huge systemic capitalist problem because well it, it, oh. the, the crews on these cargo ships are extremely underpaid that's what i'm saying was, even the captain was earning less than i do and, and he you're had not steering <laughs> massive boats up yeah and i would say that his job is harder than mine because i think it's he, probably harder in a different way but yeah (laughs) it is hard to keep uh, these things are massive and you have a lot of responsibility and you have people's lives at stake and and all that they're like they're just like lorry drivers they just have to get across the yeah and it's horrible work as well because you you know like you're away from your family for 10 months at a time up to you're really really ruining this story (laughs) for me but i'm glad that you are because of course it's capitalism and horror and I was on and a, colonialism, no doubt. I was on a French ship, so the company was French, but um, the crew were all Ukrainian, except for the the lower crew. So they have like the officer class crew. There's about twenty people on these cargo ships. There's only the, about twenty people crewing that whole ship. Yeah, maybe this one because it's bigger. Maybe it's like more like twenty five, thirty. But you've basically got people around the clock in the engine room, and then people around the clock on on the bridge steering it. And the people at the top on the bridge. Are paid more and they're the officers it's like a, it's like really hierarchical and they even have a captain's table and everything and um and they and they eat in separate rooms but on the ship that i was on the 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 kind of officer class was all were all ukrainians and the lower engine room class were all filipino people and um i dread i don't know how much quite a lot but... of snow piercer and i'm not <laughs> loving the parallels here i remember thinking wow these for what they have to do and what they're expected to go through i mean i not see their families for 10 months in a year well it's, it's pretty hard this pretty hard life so i really do feel quite sorry for whoever i feel the, terribly 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 <laughs> sorry for them like i really really do it is a hell of a job yeah um, i was kind of enjoying taking like removing all context and just being like there's a big boat stuck in a canal this is kind of hilarious but obviously i can't just have a news story can i 
Yeah, there's a, it's a problem in it. We but it's, I mean, I, things I, from their context, and it's, it's just so it, it's just such a tangible problem. It's this thing stuck and no one can move it. How? Do yeah. You, what do you do? Can't move the bloody boat. I know. <laughs> there's only okay. one. It's yeah. like every now and then, it's like it's like when that plane went missing a few years ago and no one could find it. It was like, oh my god, it was a big news yeah. story. It's like, where's that plane? Like, because we're like an, so used to, particularly in the quote unquote Western world or whatever, like everything is just so you know we order something and a lot. A lot of that is goods on there that people have ordered or whatever. We order something from wherever and we expect it to be there within a week and da 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 da. We don't actually think about the fact that this has been loading onto big ships and one of those big fucking ships is now stuck <laughs> and none of the other big ships with all our other stuff can't get through. And it's like, it's this whole kind of industry that I, I'm obviously aware that it exists, but I just never really think about it. Yeah, you know? it's amazing. Did you know that um, uh, two thirds of all the cut flowers in Europe come from Kenya like the f flowers in flower shops which are cut already mm -hmm. they're grown in Kenya and they're flown every single day they're flown from Kenya to a huge flower market in Amsterdam and then distributed across the whole of Europe it's like two thirds of all the cut flowers found that out once when I was doing this thing that's mad that's logistics in the world really <laughs> really yeah. terrible yeah. for the environment oh my lord every day millions and millions of flowers I start growing my own cut flowers and that's going to be very exciting mm. Okay, so that's the Ever Given story ruined. I can unfollow those <laughs> comedy Twitter accounts. No, I felt, I felt, I mean, it's like, Go you know, back to fucking being sad about to. capitalism. But yeah, I'm really <laughs> sorry, and I hope that everyone okay. is okay. Um, I, I feel like I ruined it for you now. It is funny. This is it's your job. I come here, I bring you a drink, not... you ruin everything for me. <laughs> <laughs> by telling me the actual facts of things okay. and hauling me out of my so we'll, stupid, ignorant thing. Anyway. Should um, we go back to our, our normal uh, sphere of... of uh, yeah, why not? Because everything else reporting. seems as shit as this now. So, much like I wish the people, or I bet the people on the Ever Given wish they could do, there was a bit of a U-turn today in or this week in politics in Germany, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Uh, Angela Merkel took the highly unusual step of apologising to the nation she really did. What is kind of interesting is that this is the first time that Merkel has had to actually do something. And she's being to... She's <laughs> In all of her... <laughs> well, she what, Merkel has learned that the best way to govern is to delegate all the decisions and to be a kind of president in the German system. You have like a president yeah. who, who makes moral pronouncements mm -hmm. and say, you know, we should take in refugees. The time that time five years ago when she yeah. said we should take in refugees and, you know, we can do this. And then she leaves all the details to all the people below her, like all the ministers, all the little mm -hmm. authorities, the state okay. governments. And I, I think that's her... Like, like uh, she that is why she's become so successful and why she's like she's considered this sort of political genius because she can you know she knows how to keep out of these day-to-day -day troubles and i think this is the first time where she's kind of being she looks a bit exposed now um with her strategy and yeah so just and she's had to make this speech where she said oh the book stops with me and it's the first time she's ever really said that yeah so just as a quick little recap for anybody who's taking a well-needed media break because <laughs> everything is terrible Merkel they had this huge meeting with all the heads of the various states and Merkel and it went on for like 12 hours or something with a huge break in the middle didn't it yeah and she basically to the best of my knowledge sort of like sprung this idea for a five day hard Easter Notbremse emergency break pull that emergency break where everything would lock down on Monday Thursday and then be shut for the whole time until Tuesday apart from a brief window on Saturday for some shops to be open to get groceries yeah. which everyone I think quite rightly pointed out to her will also be a little window where everyone goes to the supermarket and gets coronavirus yeah because I've been to the supermarket under normal Easter times and you don't want to put any more people in there. Yeah. Like it's I live in Neukölln. Like it's it you you literally would not be able to move. Yeah, so then they they sort of backtracked on that um, yeah. the next day. And she sort of did her whole mea culpa, which I just like it when politicians fucking own their shit and they say I made a mistake. Mm. And I think she did. I don't know. What's your take on it? What I don't understand is what what even is a lockdown now? <laughs> Like, what this we, is the thing I'm like what, How do we just Do you know what Like either They're gonna put on Their big boy pants And fucking Spain This time last year Or Italy This time last year 
us as in mm. in your house if you come out of your house the army is there which I don't think they can do in Germany really because it just won't work yeah I think there's also constitutional also, issues yeah that. it just won't constitutionally work they've been able to do it in Greece quite a lot apparently not with the army but with the police but like constitutionally apparently Greece is quite set up for that <laughs> I used to have a military dictatorship. Mm. Maybe it's because of that. I don't yeah, know. it could. I, I don't know. But um, my mom's in Greece. She's like, we're in week thirteen. We have to have papers going yeah. in and out. Anyway, so that's fine. But like exactly, and I think a lot of the criticism then, or a lot of the sort of commentary on this was like, and then it was so much of the media taken up talking about this decision. But it's really like, why are we spending twelve hours talking about a notbremse? when lockdowns appear to be meaningless because nobody can keep them anymore because we've had a year of this shit. We can't close the schools for any longer. They have to open. So what we really need to be fucking talking about is what, Germany? Your absolutely horrendous impf impfung strategy. Yeah. That should have been 12 hours of how are we getting this out to people? Can we use these apps? Two apps are have been produced that would allow people to take up missed appointments. Like if people are not showing up to their info appointment because they don't want AstraZeneca or they don't want the whatever. So you can get this app now? No, it's oh. been developed and some Bundesländer are going to start using it. I think one of the... So you get like a, a text message saying there's a free... Inf yeah, and you like fucking get on your running shoes and you yeah. book it down to Tempelhof or wherever you're going if you're in Berlin. Yeah, well, like that, That'd I just, be good. Yeah, they should do that. I, it, And like... Okay, I understand that we don't necessarily have all the vaccines yet, but the GPs are still ready to go. And I don't know if that is in place yet. Mm. And like, they're like, oh, but we've got the imp centrums. And I'm like, it, it, it's also that they don't have like the access to people's details that the GPs would have, I assume. I don't know. I, I told, I've literally, I've said this little speech about 79 times this week and I'm just so cross and like, we're done with lockdown. No one else can take it anymore. Like you just said, it's meaningless. Yeah, it's, it's so confusing. Like people don't, can't follow it. And um, uh, like how many people are allowed to meet up? And you keep having to check and uh, anyway, yeah. so I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the uh, Berliner Zeitung English site. So yep. I can read off some rules that have been decided today on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, so Berlin has released new rules. Yeah. That mega is fucking delicious. Which will... That's a real hangover cure. ...come into effect on Wednesday, the <laughs> I 31st... I want to talk about my mega! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the news! I think we're just going to have to do a mega cam podcast. Like, the whole... <laughs> when I started this and I said I wanted to know about German politics, <laughs> I was wrong! <laughs> I made a mistake! <laughs> <laughs> like Merkel, you made a mistake. I know. You owned your mistake. To be fair, I would like to say to Merkel that sometimes things happen with your lockdown brain. <laughs> I got drunk this her. week and I'm not a drunk purchaser, so it wasn't my drunk brain, it was my lockdown brain when I was feeling really bad. I ordered... I've, I've spent 150 euros on Schnell tests. <laughs> <laughs> How many? How many is that? That's just 20. That's more than what they cost in Rossmann, apparently. And I'm, order, where are they coming from? Hope not from China, because then they'll be stuck in the Suez Canal. Oh, I bet they're fucking in the Suez Canal. <laughs> of course they're in the Suez Canal. I don't know where they're coming from. Anyway. Okay. What was your delivery date? No, oh, there's not one. Oh, it's probably... an absolute disaster. Okay. It's... Anyway... So I would just like to, if Merkel is listening, it's okay. Be kind to yourself. I did 150 euros of Schnell test. My friend at the beginning of lockdown spent 200 euros on an embroidery kit, which she's not used. Can, can I tell second. you my one? I don't think it was 200 euros. It was 200 piece embroidery kit, which cost uh -huh. more than you should be spending on embroidery. But yeah, what did you do? I bought a lamp that is shaped like a nuclear explosion. You did. You absolutely did. It's in the other room. <laughs> I remember that. That came from China. It, it, it arrived two months after I ordered it. And I and that totally was before, before the... Um, <laughs> and it was shit as well. It didn't look anything like a nuclear It just looks like a piece of uh, cotton wool. It does, yeah. It does, yeah. <laughs> it, it looked does. much better on the picture. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Okay. Where were we? I was going to so tell sorry. you some rules. I was going to tell yeah, you... Yeah, so the rules have... 
Click and meet is is no longer being ditched, apparently. Yeah. So you can't, you can no longer make appointments for your favorite retail outlets. Uh, what they want to do now is bring in, like, you you have to have a, had a negative test conducted on the same day yeah. to get into a shop or a museum or even and uh, apparently some Berlin shopping centers are already introducing free quick tests to get mm-hmm. in so if you want to go to the mall of berlin or somewhere like that well that's quite handy you can get a free go get test. capitalism to pay for your tests yeah then you just go in and um, things in germany that are linked with capitalism are still very efficient so go do that um, there is also the system if anyone's unaware you can book yourself one free sh- schnell test a week and you can actually do it i know you weren't able to do it the other time but it is possible <laughs> you have to go in and fill in quite a lot of details of course Right. Including your passport number. And then you're entitled to one free Yeah, and you don't week. actually make an appointment. You just get it, like, that you've registered for it. And then you can just go and show up and, and queue. So you look at your uh-huh. local ones. Okay. Yeah, so you should okay. do that. Or you can come around mine, bring a mega, and I will administer you a Schnell test. I've been <laughs> trained in them now. I trained. I did all my colleagues the other day. And I've also got 20 other fucking things coming. <laughs> so come on around mine. That's grand. Body-related services which includes a haircut, cosmetic treatment, or a massage, will also require a negative test from the same day. Fair enough. And as well as indoor uh, they also said indoor events uh, and gatherings, although I don't even know what indoor God events knows, and gatherings meeting... are, are actually allowed at the moment. But yeah, that is also... Maybe allowed. like church services? Yeah. I really think they should be doing that. Like, what about home office? Um, apparently there is going to be a decree from the government saying all home office is banned. Is that no, true? No, not home office is banned. That would be a nightmare. Oh, not home office. I mean, the other thing. The other thing. office. They're what? going into the real office is banned. Real office is banned. God, this is the problem. We're so confused. <laughs> home office flicht. Yes, that means that there's a, an obligation. It's obligatory. And it's something like 50% or something of non-essential. Is it? So what I'm reading here is that um, bosses must offer their employees the option of working at home mm-hmm. if possible. So I guess there's a lot of depends on what you mean by if possible. But the, the and also maybe I understand people are bored at home, but if you have the option, you could also stay home. There's a few offices near me on the ground floor with big windows and I walk past them and it's it's just an office with people not wearing masks sitting at the same large desk. Yeah. All working on individual computers. I struggle to see why they need to do that together in an office. I don't know. Maybe yeah. people are just so desperate. And if you can do it in small groups, then it's okay. I, I don't want to put... Because people's mental health is fucked at this stage of the game. Yeah, 150 I mean, euros I've spent on tests. <laughs> okay. When I get them free in work. <laughs> okay. Like, that's... I don't want to judge anybody. But if you can, stay home, I think. It's nice. And that is all the news, isn't it? Is it? Did you not want to talk about that protest? Oh, yeah. I mean, there was a protest today, apparently, where a Kredenka, where they, they, they were blocking an Impfzentrum, a vaccination centre in Reading. And apparently there were so many of them and it got so dangerous for the people queuing that the police shut it down. That they, um, they, or the, the vaccination centre shut itself down and said, uh, sent everyone home because it was getting too dodgy. Why? Where are the police in this? Where, like where? this. Oh, this is the other thing that we haven't spoken about, which is the closing of Meuterei in the Reichenberger Straße, which caused massive protests and stuff this week. Which is another bar that they came in with huge police presence and shut down. Yeah. So the fuck are they? Whenever this shit is happening, go yeah. arrest all those people, get them away. It can't have been an official protest. Who's like genehmigt that? Yeah, and also there were protests last week in Dresden where some police officers were actually attacked, physically attacked, um, by some Kredenka. Yeah, this is, I can't, like, I, 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 how is that allowed to happen? How, like, Germany, this is just a fucking Venn diagram of all the issues that we've been talking about. The crap vaccination strategy and also their inability to crack down on, like, right-wing nonsense people and also their weird anti-vax culture and anti-kind-of-medicine culture. And all of this has come together. You cannot let 
a protest from querdenkers stop people vaccinating? No. Because your police are too busy shutting down a fucking collective bar in Kreuzberg that's been there for years because some fuck wants to do up the building who lives God knows where and has a bank account in the Cayman Islands. I don't understand. And you can talk about like locking us down for Monday fucking Thursday. I don't think it's going to solve all of those problems. I'm so angry. I'm so, so, <laughs> oh God, that makes me so cross. Do you like some good news? Yeah. It's not going to make me sound like a little bit of a dog in the manger, but I'm angry on behalf of everybody. But all teachers have now been allowed, regardless of what age group you teach, we have been able to book our vaccines. Yeah. And I get my first dose on Friday morning. Oh, I'm wow. I'm really excited. Which one are you getting? AZ, baby. <laughs> if it rhymes with Jay-Z, how bad can it be? <laughs> No, basically everyone I spoke to who has had, my mum has had it, my aunt has had it, my sister's boyfriend who is a GP who I spoke to, he has had it. He's been doing some, like, it's it's fine. And I will tell you how it was. But you thank you to choice? everyone who maybe signed that little petition that I put on Twitter. Who knows what difference all of these things make. Okay. Um, yeah, so my first one on Friday and then I have my last one at 4 p.m. on the last day of term. When's that? Uh, the 23rd of June. Okay. That's quite still quite a big gap. That's like... Apparently, I was all like, nah, 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 they don't have enough, like, you know, spouting off my usual shite. And then it was actually like, no, AstraZeneca does that. The other ones don't. Mm. And Germany, of course, as you always say, reads the instructions. Yeah. That's what I was spouting this off to, like, a group <laughs> of teachers. And then my German colleague was like, actually, no, they do all have the second dose. And that apparently is they've discovered that AstraZeneca works better if you have the three month gap. Oh, right. But that's good. Teachers are getting vaccinated. So like that is good. And I have to say it was very swift and efficient. We got emailed out our codes and then we kind of all went on and booked together and it was really great and it was so nice to see colleagues who have obviously been a lot more worried maybe than I have been, like genuinely so relieved. I'll be interested to see how I feel after I get the vaccine. My sister said it really had like a psychological effect on her when she got it. She was just like, she hadn't really realized what she was kind of carrying around with her. Mm. Yeah, well. Um... But I just want that for everyone quicker and please you're God. Going, and you're having it done at Templehof you said historically and it made me think of how I know Templehof the lovely imposing Nazi airport <laughs> 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 which has served so many weird functions like yeah there was the sort of you know the Nazi airport and then how I first learned about it was um uh, learning about the Berlin airlift in like year nine history class. And I wish I could go back to sort of me in year nine. It was about the beginning of around the time of the millennium, the year 2000, and tell myself in Mr. Ross's history class, you remember that airport because someday <laughs> you'll be going in to get a vaccination against a global pandemic. Right. To be honest, I think the thing I would find most appalling if you told me that to my year nine self is the fact that I'm getting it because I've become a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Well, yeah, it's a it's an interesting building as well because they used it as a refugee shelter. Yeah, years ago. that's what I was going to say. And, it's sort of the Berlin airlift and, and then the refugee shelter and. And um, it's it's mad that building is huge. Have you yeah, ever done I've, a tour? I've gone into it to pick up which is also probably horrifying to my 15 year old self but like when I did the half marathon I went in to pick it up but I've not done a tour yeah you used to be able to do tour I don't know if you still can but you know the one thing I learned on that tour was that there were rooms in that airport that have never been used like they built it in the back in the 30s and then the war started and then there was the cold war and it was just never there were, fully it was never fully used like it was taken over by the Americans after the war and they built a, there's a basketball court put in there put some and flats a, in there and then put a, some people yeah. in there and then people wouldn't have to close bars yeah. for no there's good reason a, 
and there's a ballroom in there where you can have balls like they, the, the Americans had balls in there the American military and it was a, it, it's like a crazy huge building and it's so big that it they is, don't know what to do with it it is it is mad and it's also like it's so imposing and it's also like it's become I think everyone like who lives in in and around where I live you know part of your lockdown thing has been to go for your kind of grim one person or two person stomp around the 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 1930s era Berlin airport <laughs> yeah. and I was like saying this to my brother the other day I was like oh I hope they're playing something rousing over the sort of like <laughs> megaphones oh, when if I I'd, first moved to Berlin it was still being used as an that's airport. crazy I think it had just stopped just before when did it stop mid mid 2000s yeah it, it had just stopped being used whenever I yeah. moved here and it is like it's crazy like I love that there's this huge park right beside another huge park <laughs> right beside my house right in the center of a big city yeah Anyway. But yeah, I'm excited to be able to tell everybody how it goes. Also, really fucking take... Like, I'm tired. If Bill or George of the Gates and Soros variety would like to take the take the wheel on Friday, I'm, I'm all right with that. <laughs> You'd like to be I'm on fine. It could bring a whole level while. of, like, quality thinking to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Well, if when next time when we record and you start talking like a robot... If I just start I'll making know. like sense and knowing things about how the world works, you can be like, shit, nobody gets, nobody got the vaccine, they were correct. <laughs> Bill Gates, it's okay. uh, great. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm I hope, really quite I hope drunk we, now. This is a delicious I hope mayhem. we've been informative in between the sort of talking. <laughs> You think they're getting their information in between us talking, like when it's like a negative, <laughs> like we're, we're running like a death. I think I, I was kind of, you know, between the lines, there was some information in the last half hour I think, that you will be able to use uh, in your day to day life. I yeah. hope. I hope. I, I do have a kind of ambition for this podcast to be informative at some <laughs> level. Yeah, and, me too. So. Uh, so yeah. If we've learned nothing else, we've learned that you can Book actually some smell tests, so you get can go a smirnoff and... ice. Uh, it's not quite a smirnoff ice, but it's pretty fucking close. It's delicious. It's all a right. Furst yeah. Uranoff. Is Furst yeah. count? Is that what you said? Yeah. But then what's a graph? It's also a count. I mean, it's just another label, isn't it? Like yeah, but there's different things. Viceroy and Viscount and stuff. I don't well, know. Well, that's what we need to know. I think it's a. I would say Furst is just count, and Graph is also a count. But no, because then they would have the same name. That's a, this is this is exactly why. Well, we'll tell the listeners next week what the difference is between first and graph. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. If I remember. Anyway, thank you very very much. If you're still with us, <laughs> thank <laughs> you very much for listening. Well done for making it through. Um and yeah, stay safe. Wear your FFP twos. Maybe go get a little Chanel test, but also be kind to yourself. And if you've done something insane because of your lockdown brain, that's fine. You have got this far and it's fine. It's all okay. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I shouldn't really day drink before I do this. <laughs> I think it went well. Let's hope so. Thank you.